going on YouTube? It's Mr. Ferguson here. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day today. Welcome back to the Mr. Ferguson vlog channel. Uh, if you don't know, um, which I figure if you're here, you probably do know. I don't think we have people coming in from just randomly here on YouTube, but um, I have a Mr. Ferguson lawn care channel. If you're interested in DIY, do-it-yourself lawn care, go check it out. Uh, it's my, quote, main channel. Uh, we started the midweek mid quickie there. We've kind of just done just straight up lawn care there. I've moved the what's called the midweek quickie devotional to this channel, to Mr. Ferguson Vlog. So thank you so much for stumbling upon us, for finding it, or from coming over from the lawn care part. We're actually going to talk a little bit about lawn care, very basic generic things, because that's where this midweek quickie came from. So I want to jump right into it. Um, and hats off and thank you to those at my church who had said, Mr. Ferguson, I really enjoyed the last one. I went back and actually watched that one myself. And I'm like, Lord, you are amazing because I'm not smart enough to say things like this. It's the Holy Spirit. And uh, it, I would really highly encourage you, if you did not watch the last one we did, we talked about Joshua and Caleb and the land of Canaan and the children of Israel um, and God is our defender. Um, I would highly encourage you to go listen to it. It's actually really good, not because of me, but because it's God's word. And it just really has been something on my mind and my heart. And we're going to go back to that next week. I believe, but I want to go into something that God truly spoke to me the other day uh, in my mind, in my, in, my vo in my body, and just said, well, sharing something with me just out of the blue, and uh, I want to bring that to you today. I'm not sure what we titled it or what the thumbnail shows, but I was over, uh, I was playing some golf with my dad and came home, and it was about an hour before dark, and I said, you know what? I need to cut the grass. I think I can get it done really quick. And ran back here to my shed, got my mower, started cutting, and my neighbor, Mr. Kevin, came over. We chatted for a little bit, and I believe, and then I got back to it and started mowing again. And as I got, you know, I started my backyard, and I, because I, I did an angle cut, as you can kind of see, that's the last cut I did. And as I began to get back around to the front, um, you know, the Lord, the Holy Spirit just began to speak to me out of the blue and was just like, you know, it started getting darker. And what he began to say to me is, you know, look at this lawn, Stephen. He was, and I'm paraphrasing, but this is what I begin to think as I mow. And I know it's the Holy Spirit because as I shared with my girls, the enemy ain't ever going to share things like this with me. It was the Lord. But he was like, look at this lawn. Look how pretty it looks with the, with the, with the setting sun. You know, it's, it's darker. It's, it makes the grass tint look a little darker. It makes it look darker than it really is. You can't tell what is fescue. And you can't tell what's Bermuda grass. You can't see the little imperfections in it. When it's darker, everything looks a little bit better. And uh, as I was telling Kevin, my neighbor, when I came back around, the way the light hit it, I'd never seen my lawn look like that in all my years. It was the way the clouds were and the sun setting and the way it was hitting back here. It looked absolutely beautiful. But the Lord was sharing, sharing things with me, and I don't want to go too deep into that. I'll get to that after this, but I want to read the scripture first. And we're going into a very famous one, uh, but we're not the one that you're thinking about. But everybody knows John 3.16. I figure we'll read that just because if you don't know it, you should know. Um, it's very uh, powerful. But John 3.16 and a few verses after that is what I want to talk about with you quickly today. And John 3.16 says, uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And now we're getting into the parts that I really want to base this devotional off today. Uh, verse 17, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. <laughs> See, the Holy Spirit's already dealing with me. He's so good. Mm. Brings tears to my eyes just reading his, his words. Verse 18, Oh, help me, Lord, to get through this. Uh, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who, who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And here we go. This is the main 19 and 20, um, or the 19, 20, 21 are the main scriptures I want to get through here. So 19, uh, John 3, 19. And this is the condemnation, that the light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. And verse 20, For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, <laughs> lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God can't even get through the verses without 
shedding tears. The Holy Spirit is just, while I was cutting grass that day, these are the verses that came to my mind. I haven't read those verses lately in a long time. I've been in the Old Testament in my daily devotions. Um, but as I begin to cut the grass, these are the scriptures that came to my mind. And the Holy Spirit began to say to me, as I'd said earlier, um, this is the way the human heart is, Stephen. When it's dark, you can't see the weeds. <laughs> when it's dark, you can't see the Bermuda. When it's dark, you can't tell what's good grass and what's bad grass. You can't tell. My lawn looks just as good as the guy next to me. And the guy next to, you know, next to me over here. And the guy across the street. And, and we all look the same. And see... The reason why he was sharing that with me is I put a lot of effort into my lawn. We've put a lot of money into our lawn. We've paid a lot to the water company to keep this grass looking healthy and make it through summer. Um, if you know about heat stress and grass, it's difficult to keep fescue, cool season grass alive in North Carolina in the summer. But we've put a lot of money into it. We've put a lot of time into it to try to get rid of the bad weeds, to keep the good grass. And as I'm cutting grass just out of the blue, the Lord begins to share this with me that... <laughs> In the middle, you know, at noon, like right around now, it's right around noontime right now. It's cloudy today, but the light is shining. And see, the light exposes everything in my lawn. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm putting down with the Holy Spirit was speaking to me? And so I can see the spot back here. Can you guys see it? Yeah, see where I sprayed this herbicide back here? See, that's where I'm trying to kill a certain type of grass called Bermuda. But I'm trying to keep alive the fescue because that's the good grass. That, I have a fescue lawn. So I, so though that that Bermuda is not necessarily a weed, it's it's invasive. And I've got to deal with it. But see, when it's dark... You know, you can't see the little weeds. When it's dark, you can't see the little spots like that. Everything looks manicured and pretty and awesome. And I was looking across the other lawns and, and it's dark and you can see it. Every, basically everything looks the same in the dark. Everything, every, their lawn, they don't put a whole lot of effort over in these other neighborhood lawns over here. They don't, they're not out there every day. I'm, I know because I'm out here every day in my lawn and I don't see some of these neighbors out here, but, but they all pretty much look the same in the dark. But God was sharing with me when we're in the light, that's when you can see, wow, this guy takes care of his grass. Wow, this guy, he fertilizes. Oh, this one, okay, so they must be new. They're, they're not big homeowners. They cut their grass, but they're not big into fertilizing and planting, and they got some weeds here and there. And that's not picking on my neighbors. Please don't, if my neighbors watch this, that's not the point. But you get where I'm going with this, what the Holy Spirit was showing me. That when, and these scriptures is what came to mind. And this morning, I shared it with my family because I like doing that before bringing it to you guys. I think that's good to, to, to know it and speak it out loud before bringing it to you. But as I begin to read this, I couldn't even read it this morning. My daughter's looking at me like, Dad, why are you crying? You're a weird guy. You're such, why are you crying? And I just, I couldn't. Waking up first thing in the morning, it's, it's 7.30 or something, and, and we're sitting here and I'm reading this and they're like, why are you crying? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just reading this and God just has begun to deal with me these scriptures. Let's go back real quick. Verse 19, and this is the condemnation that the light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Just like that lawn, the darkness, everybody looks the same. Naturally, you know, in the darkness, everything looks pretty good. You can't see the, the, the details of the lawn. And, and here, as we told my daughters, men are naturally wicked. We're naturally sinful. We're naturally wanting not to be in the light. We want to be in the darkness. It brings to mind, as I told my daughters, when Jesus came into the city, I can't remember the name, he got off the boat and there was the man that was, had a legion of demons in him. And what did he do? Oh, Jesus, son of God, please don't cast us out. Bow before him. They, the demons knew who Jesus was. They were begging him not to cast him out. Into the, he said, please, just let us go in these pigs. He said, go. And he cast out a thousand demons out of this man. And he's sitting there praising God. He said, stay here. Tell him what God has done for you. But what did the, that, that aside, that's where a lot of people stop with the story. But in this story, what did the townspeople do? What in the world is this guy? Who is this guy? He's got power. Did they run to him to have their demons, exert, you know, to, to cast him out? Did they go and say, God, I have this leprosy. God, I have this sickness. God, my daughter is sick. No, they said, get out of our town. We don't want you or, or your kind here. And Jesus departed and didn't do anything else there. Why? Because men love darkness rather than light. They didn't want to be exposed. Woo! 
Woo, that's good stuff. They didn't want to be exposed to what Jesus came to do. See, he exposed this man. This man, everybody knew this guy had issues. Everybody knew the demoniac. Oh, yeah, that's our crazy guy. But when this powerful man showed up and said, go, cast out the demonic spirits into the swine, the swine go over the cliff, and these people watch it. Oh, this guy ain't joking. He's full. He's holy. He's full of light. He's full of something different. They didn't want to be close to that. They wanted to stay in their darkness. They didn't want. They didn't come to him with expectations of being made holy like him. Hey, I want some of what you got. No, they said, get out. We want to live in our darkness. Why is that so? Because right here it says, and men love darkness rather than light. We do. We like to stay in our sin, but there's some that he's chosen. There's some that he's called to be out of the darkness into the light. Uh, verse 20, for everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. Just like those people in that city, just like today, people that are not lovers of God, they're lovers of themselves. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to be exposed for who I truly am. Um, we hate the we hate that light of God. We hate to be exposed. We hate the conviction, the shame. Well, I did do that, and I don't want to talk about those things I used to do. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to talk about these things I have issues with because we naturally just want to, no, nope, I don't want to do that. I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to give myself to a God. I want to live for me. I want to do it my way. Naturally, that's what we are. Um, but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. So I'm going to put the Bible down here now. But uh, in short, you know, going back to that lawn, I, I told Kevin, my neighbor, I was like, Kevin, God is amazing. I said, the way, look how pretty that lawn is. You can't tell that anything, I don't have a single weed in my lawn. And I don't have tons of weeds and anything like that. But it's just like, look at how pretty the lawn is at, at dusk. You know, when the sun is, is going down and you can't see every detail. But man, at high noon, when there's no clouds and the sun is shining, you can see every detail. You can see the dead grass. You can see all the imperfections in the lawn. That's so how God's love and God's light is. When we get in His presence, it's like, Lord, you show it everything. It's not just see on the outside to the world. It's like, oh, you have it together. Oh, this guy's good. But when you step in the light of God, he exposes everything. He knows every single thing about us, our past, our present, and what we're going to be in the future. And, and for those that call him Lord and Savior and spend time listening to devotions, listening to the Bible, praying, spending time with God, uh, for those that call him master, uh, we want to be in that light. Lord, expose me. Lord, let's deal with these things. Lord, these imperfections, just like the lawn, I need to pull them out by the root or else they're just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Problems are going to expand, you know, gradually. Uh, a grass that is a weed in this lawn. I don't want that in that. It's going to expand. It's going to grow. It's going to take over if I don't get it under control. And Lord, I can't do it on my own. Lord, only you can do it. Thank you for your light. But see, those around us, guys, those in this world all around us, they're not in the light. Nope, I don't want to be exposed. Nope, I don't want to be in the light of God. I don't want to get near that. Get away from me. Get away from me. I don't want to be exposed. I don't want to, this ugliness to come out and people to know who I truly am. But see, we should be the opposite. Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I deserve deserve that death. Lord, I deserve to be in a devil's hell, but because of what you did, I'm not because of your mercy, Lord. I'm not. I'm, I'm here. I'm alive. And I'm able to tell people Jesus loves me. I'm able to tell people I used to be this way, but now I'm not. God's light shined upon me. He exposed me for who I was when I finally surrendered and said, I can't do this life on my own. And now I give my life to him and he is totally taken over and forgiven me and washed me. He's pulled roots out as I've shared on this channel. The things I've been bound to, I'm no longer bound to because of Jesus, because of the Holy Spirit. And he can do it in your life. He can do it in our friend's life, our in-laws, our, our family, our, our co-workers. He can do it in their life, but are we sharing it with them? So I just thought that was awesome how God brought this about. Um, as I'm cutting grass, he often does that. You know, the, like I said, the enemy's not going to come and say, did you know this? Because because the enemy wants me to do anything but share God's word. Uh, so I know it's the Holy Spirit, that discernment there. But God is so good. And I just thank him. And I thank you guys for, uh, for tuning in today uh, to listen to this midweek quickie and taking the time to feed your spirit man or woman on the inside because that's what builds us up. And these days and hours, um, as I was talking with a guy um, at a local business uh, um, up at Southern Seeds, I was telling him, you know, the, the new... TV is YouTube, and uh, we're constantly feeding ourselves something 
off TV, off YouTube. You know, it's not the network channels aren't, aren't uh, in control like they used to be, NBC, ABC, CBS. It's YouTube. And so you've got all kinds. Yeah, it's, it's people like me can have a small voice on the platform, but so can uh, the witchcraft people. So can all these other, you know, uh, um, demonic people. They have a voice just like I can. And so you've got all these different voices um, that's out there that kids are picking up phones and they're listening to. And so we got to be in prayer. And where's the church and you know what are we doing and so we need God to guide us and direct us that we need more of the true and living God Jesus said I'm the way I'm the truth I'm the life no man comes before the Father but through me Jesus is the key his blood is the answer and the key but see all these other voices out there telling our kids and telling our, our neighbors and telling grown adults that there's you can do this you can do that and be fine there is no heaven or there is a heaven and you can do it this way or that way but Jesus is the only way and we got to speak the truth regardless of what our government wants to say, regardless of what our world wants to say, until they shut us down, shut our YouTube channels down, they come take our Bibles and do whatever they're going to do. My life is not my own, as we sing that song. My life is not my own, to you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Yeah, we, do we really give ourselves to Jesus and say, God, use me for your purposes? I was talking with a brother in church about that the other day. So thank you for tuning in. I hope this very simple, basic, two scripture, you know, midweek quickie, quickie has blessed you today that we need to be in the light of God. Are you exposing yourself to his presence so that he can reveal the ugliness so we can deal with it? Because many are not. Many are shying away from it. They want to get away from the light and blend in and just look like everybody else. But we know in the end, they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Those that don't call upon Jesus, those that don't know that he's the way, you know, everybody has the opportunity. Are we sharing? Are we giving them another opportunity to accept Jesus? So thank you so much for tuning in today. A quick prayer and we'll end the video. Father, I just thank you so much for each and every person that is tuned in today. I, don't, I believe it's not by accident. Lord, I'm nobody special. I'm just Stephen, a guy living in North Carolina, and I just get on here and I just want to share your word and what I feel like you've spoken to me, even while cutting grass. Lord, I feel like this is the message you wanted me to share for somebody out there today, whether they're here in North Carolina, maybe in another country, maybe in a jail cell somehow. Lord, I don't know how your word gets out, but you can do anything. You're my God and you're my king. And so I pray for each and every person watching this and praying and bowing their head right now that God, you minister to them right where they are. God, give them supernatural joy the rest of their day, Lord, uh, after this video. Let them think upon the things of God. Let them expose themselves to the light of God, that, Lord, you make our, our hearts pure and, and good soil and good ground for your word to develop. And, God, we will be a witness for others, for you, no matter where we go. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us today here on the Midweek Quickie. Tune in next Wednesday. We hope to have a video up uh, every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Check out the Mr. Ferguson Grass Channel um, over there on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, videos at 7 a.m. are released, so check them out. Uh, sometimes uh, on um, the Friday video coming up this Friday on that channel, I'm actually talking about something biblical there. So check out the Friday video. You may be interested in it. God bless you. We'll see you next Wednesday.